can you know it's fine if you can uh, so um, you can do several blocks so you were saying rector sheath block I mean I think rector sheath blocks are really good uh, for a, a midline incision it's gonna so this is like you know so th the other thing to think about is that we've looked at the chest and we know that you've got anterior branches lateral branches and posterior branches so it's exactly the same in the abdomen so the your your sort of sub pectoral plane block this is the abdominal equivalent the advantage in the abdomen is we've got a really obvious structure so medical student what's the mid what's what's the thing that runs down the midline of your tummy the, uh, uh, on the in the abdominal wall oh in the abdominal the, wall yeah. the uh the linear alba and then on either side we've got the rectus muscle haven't we yeah so we should see a linear alba there you are it's white but it's not hard because it could only be white or black couldn't it on ultrasound but we've got linear alba and then whichever way we go we've got a rectus muscle so that is a rectus muscle there surrounded by the rectus sheath so if you do this rectus sheath block you want to be at the bottom of the muscle not not like a tap block where you're between two layers bottom of the muscle to lift the muscle up yeah so just there yeah because the look because the, lo the, lo the lower layer is the peritoneum so you don't want to be through the you know pre peritoneal ideally you want to be uh, and then you can put it there and there's two ways to do it you can do it like that with a needle coming that way or you can swing it around and you can do it like that and if you look you can see the striae of the six pack quite in good isn't it the only thing to watch out for is that you can often get a small blood vessel there the um, superior epigastric artery in there somewhere I can't see it here you get reasonable spread don't you? you get spread yeah so you only need to do one on either side and I would do it above the umbilicus you can see erectus below the umbilicus I put the jelly on but the the sheath does not necessarily continuous below the umbilicus so it's good to uh, do it above the umbilicus now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to follow it round, and we've got the abdominal muscles which I think every all of you will know because you'll have all done tap blocks I actually find taps quite hard to do. They're technically difficult. They are. Uh, they are. They are technically. Because I, I never go quite. St yeah. I go like that. I'm yeah. Supposed to, but I can never. I find it so hard to pierce that. Yeah, they're difficult. They're difficult. So, um, so the first described tap blocks was like this. So you know, three layers. Um, we've moved on generally. So that probably only got the anterior branches. So you, the lateral branches move off more laterally. So um, analgesia wasn't great. So what you can do is you can move back. Now, this is now. If you make it, can you make this deeper? Okay, deeper. Other way, other way. Okay. Yeah, other way. Okay, now I'm going to come in here. Watch this, okay? So we've got the trans, look at the transverse abdominalis and look below it, okay? Mm. So as I come round, can you see? that there's also another muscle there now, especially if I go lower. Yeah. So if you see so if you freeze it, it's not so easy to see here. So you've got oh that's the bed. Uh, so here is another muscle. So that's the transverse abdominalis, okay, uh, ending there. So that's the quadratus lumborum. Okay? If you go higher up, it's because it's a it's a, it's a pyramidal shape, so if you go higher up the abdomen it joins here and if you go lower down it joins further along because it's it gets wider it, go, it extends the further down you go so press play again uh, and so you can see it's quite big there now the muscle so you can do a tap a QL1 block which is it's just it's a bit closer it's, so the QL1 is just there between the two so it's basically like a really posterior tap block and then the QL2 block is what Faraz just pointed at. So it's basically the same thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Like. If you uh, were to do a tap, so my taps end so up. The QL2 being is like just there. Yeah. We end up being quite down here anyway, don't we? Yeah. So that's that that is a that's a, like a posterior tap block, which is kind of the same thing. Mm. And then the other thing you can do is you can do a transversalis fascia block where you can come here and go underneath the quadratus, but then that's quite close to abdominal contents, isn't it? But yeah. So where would you do it? Do it just here. QL1 slash 2, I think they're the same thing really. Okay, so I mean that's, you know, in my opinion, they're 
centimetre difference, so they'll spread. Actually, it's probably safer, isn't it? Yeah, it's 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 so it's safer than that, isn't it? Because yeah. you've got a muscle in the way. You've got a big muscle belly in the way, yeah. so it doesn't matter where you go. Good. I'm not going to do t TQL. Iliwinguinal. Iliwinguinal is basically a tap block. Anterior superior iliac spine towards the umbilicus. Plonk it on. Oop. Bit of jelly. In that plane, you plonk it on. And then you get those sort of sweeping looking muscles. Iliwinguinal is quite a nice block. So there. So it's much less superficial. So do you want to turn the, turn the um, depth down? Yeah, down a bit further. There you go. So if you want to pause the screen. So you've got tap, uh, internal oblique, external oblique, and you've got the neurovascular bundle there. And that's the anterior superior iliac spine. So it kinda you get you kinda get little curves that come off it like that. <laughs>